Okay guys, today we're going to dig the hole to plant a tree. We're going to talk about amending the backfill, uh, training support or uh, pruning, and uh, hopefully uh, tying them up. So I'm just going around. This is a nursery spade. It's all big blue. It's all steel. Very heavy. Tough to work with all day. Remember our guidelines? The hole should be two times the diameter of the root ball. So this tree has been spotted here to plant. I'm coming back. I just went around the whole thing with my spade. Excavate it and I'm going to move the tree out of the way. Digging, people think this is weird, but when you have heavy sod, I like to cut it into pieces. This is not real heavy, but dice it so it makes it easier. If you did have really heavy sod, so it makes it easier to get out. When you dig, this sounds weird, but you don't start at the edge, right? You start over here, well you could, I could start at the edge, but you start, you dig backwards, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna put my shovel in. I use it like a fulcrum. See how I'm letting that do the work? I'm not letting my arms do the work. I'm letting the soil do the work. Now ideally I should have a container here for my spoils. That's the soil we take out of the hole. But I forgot one. So again, I'm digging backwards, I'm digging backwards. Let me dig for a minute. So my hole should be two times the diameter and equal to depth of the plant, right? So I'm gonna leave some of this here. I'm gonna go around and clean my sides up now. I'm just gonna leave that in the hole. Small tree like this, it's easy to just unpot it, set it in the hole to check my depth, right? So it's not deep enough, I want it equal. If this were heavy clay soil, I might plant it a bit high, not in this soil. So I'm going to take out some from the middle so I get my depth right. See that yellow sand? We just hit yellow sand. You guys know I have yellow sand on my property. I've talked about it a lot. So if you're doing a really big tree that wasn't so easy to put in, and you only want to put it in the hole once use a spade like this for a measure so I would take my spade put it across the hole measure my tree with my shovel like this put my hand underneath it if I go down now my hand is basically right there so I know I'm at the right depth easy peasy okay so now let's talk about amending the backfill to amend or not to amend Right, so I have pure organic growing media. It's bark and peat. I have sandy soil. Some of it's black, but it's very light. Poor water, nutrient holding. So two different soil types means I should amend, correct? So I got a bucket here. I'm gonna pour some in the hole. And I use the hole like a mixing bowl. dig out the sides now that I'm planting it. I'm going to de-weed it before we put it in, right? We got to talk now about cutting the roots, circling and girdling roots. So this tree is not too bad. They're pretty small. Uh, old school, not old school, but up until just recently, we would just cut this four times, cut the bottom, put a big X in it. This is what I've been doing for years. I'm starting to see some reports now of actually shaving it like this to make sure you get them all. See, like there's one I cut it. I'm going to show you that on a worse one in a minute. You definitely got to de-weed the top, but they're also talking about carefully cutting some of the top now because there might be a hidden root down there that I can't see that over time will turn into a girdler and I don't want that careful not to cut the phloem. This is a very sharp tool. This is another one of those purchases from A.M. Leonard. So, I 
that sound. There we go. So I know I've gotten the top roots. I know I've scored the four sides. I know I have cut the bottom. Some people like to finger loose some of the roots. I'm not too worried about that on this tree because it's not that pot bound. It's a Japanese maple that was just potted bare root last year. So see, even though there's still a circle, a root going in a circle there, I cut it. So it won't keep growing that way. All right, so now we can come down. It's too low. Uh, a little bit. Remember too low, especially in clay, is this bad, a boo-boo. Oh, I'm gonna check the top. We didn't talk about this, but I want to face the graft union away from the sun. If I got a thin side, I'm going to face it toward the sun to try and help it get filled out. And straighten it a bit. I'm going to go ahead and reuse all this. I'm going to throw it in the bottom though because it might have weeds in it, weed seeds. And I'll put a bit of that with this new stuff. And then remember we want to firm the soil. This is our rain dance that we talk about. So I'm going to go around, pack the soil in with my feet to eliminate air pockets. That's so there's direct contact between the soil and the root ball. So it will get moisture through capillary action. I'm now going to finish this and I'll do my final straightening when I'm done. These are very handy tools. You can dig with them, you can do all kinds of stuff with them. Again, if this was in somebody's yard, I should have had a spoils bucket or a tarp. I'm trying to go as fast as I can, guys. I'm going to get some of this darker stuff. i got to finish it off. I could have added a little more to mix. Now I do my final check for it being straight. I want to step back from the tree, look from one direction, and then go perpendicular. From the other direction it looks okay from here this side was a little wanky part of that's because my central leader took a little shot to the to the side now here's the other thing i'm going to try and demonstrate here is we want this lip for mulch and i don't have any mulch but i will show you ah, i'll use that compost so i'm going to put a little bit more soil up around the roots but just on this side Remember, by amending the backfill, we want to trick the roots into the amended soil. Those amendments will disappear over a period of time, and then uh, they'll grow into my surrounding soil. But otherwise, why would they ever want to grow out of that really nice growing media in the pot? Okay. Essence of time, I'd probably put a little bit more in, but notice I'm leaving the lip. So now, Let's pretend this is mulch, even though it's my, it's mostly bark. Now, right, I have a lip so that the mower doesn't suck it up and spit it out. When I water, the water's gonna get stopped by the lip, especially in a clay soil. It'll get stopped and held in there and looks pretty. All right, let's talk about pruning. <clears throat> so this is, a, this is a young transplant. So my primary goal is maintain a central leader and look at the framework. So for this particular tree, I got two. So I have one of two choices. Either I can prune this back, a reduction cut, to promote this as my central leader, or, and I might do it on this one, just cut it all the way. Because remember, what does a heading cut do? It promotes growth from right behind the cut. So it's very possible since I prune this, this one will grow more than this one this year. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take it. Um, if I really wanted to get anal, I could whew, tie a small bamboo stake to this. I've done this in the nursery to train central leaders on trees. So I might come back and do that and leave it for a year. One more year of wood on this will stiffen it up straight. So other than that, right, new school is we do as little pruning as possible when we transplant a tree. And the reason for that is what's going to grow roots down there is the photosynthetic food that these leaves are going to make. So if I cut a bunch of stuff off, First of all, I'm going to stimulate growth, but that's going to be at the expense of root growth. So I don't really want to, unless we have to for the first
first year. Even though I got a lot of stuff here I could train. <clears throat> so your other criteria are, am I afraid that this is gonna dry out and die this year? If, if I am, because it's out in the country, it's windy, it's sandy soil, nobody's gonna irrigate it, I would prune more, right? Um, and again, I take off this inward growing, I get rid of one of these two, I try to promote growth going out that way. But I'm gonna make believe that yeah, I just take this whole branch, now that I look at it, right? That's a weak crotch angle. So I could just take that whole thing and this one for now and call it good. But I'm not, I'm not going to on this tree. Um, I'm just gonna pull it back out of the ground. But anyway, so that's our pruning criteria. I wanted to show you one more here for training if I were to plant this tree. So this was my central leader. It's gone, right? This is a tree lilac, opposite leaf arrangement. The two buds below that, uh, the accessory buds, have taken over and eliminated it. So I'm actually gonna, even though I'm gonna leave a double crotch here, there's good bark ridge. So my goal here would be to take out that old central leader, let it heal over and promote, and uh, just let these two be the two main trunks now. The other thing I wanted to show you on this one is, this is an example, right, of worse circling roots. So this one would be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more aggressive on cutting. I've even gone through before and cut the whole bottom of a tree off like this before to get rid of all of those circling roots. I do this a lot when we shift things up in the nursery from a small pot to a bigger pot. It's just easier to cut the whole bloody bottom off. I'm having a little trouble with that one. Normally you don't like to use your pruners on roots. I have old pruners that we use on roots, so I'm not ruining the blades on good ones. But And then we'd still go through, slice, slice, make sure you're cutting through. Don't be delicate. I'm getting through all those roots. I'm going down a good inch, all right? And then I still want to come back and scrape off the top. I'm not going to do that again today, but I don't want to come through it just like that. It's okay. Hey, remember if they dig a tree out of the field grown, they can lose 50% of the roots. I'm not doing that because this tree had 100% of its roots. How much time we have? 12 minutes. All right, I'm going to see if I can finish this tree that we planted with staking it. Normally I want to know which way the wind is coming from and I'd stake perpendicular to that. So if I know that that's the west, I think the wind's typically going to blow this direction, I'm going to go on the north and the south. The reason for that is if I put the stakes this way, it would hold it this way, but <clears throat> it would be loose on the bag. This way it's going to allow it to move. Remember the rules, the guidelines of staking young trees. No root movement, but I want the top to move around. So we're going to stake low. I took these wooden stakes and put a little notch in there. I don't know if you can see it, but you'll see it later when I tie the wire to it. You got to come outside of the root ball because that's all soft. Needless to say, this tree probably barely needs staking because it's so little. But I'm just trying to demonstrate. And for right now, I'm not. Oh, kind of crooked, isn't it? <laughs> going to do the other one just so I still have breath to keep talking. So let me show you how we do this. I can do one side first. I've got my wire here. I'm going to guesstimate the length that I need. Come here you. That's plenty. So here's a little tip about Falco pruners. Right down in the throat, they have a little notch. You can cut wire with that. I don't highly recommend it because if you miss, you're gonna mess up your blade, but it is doable. I'm gonna move to your side now. Again, I didn't have any hose, but I had this. It's for a heating cooling system. That should work just fine laying around. This is something you have people do in the winter, they cut hose and, whoop, look at that, it poked right through. Well, I guess I should have. Okay, so, I wanna bend this, I'm gonna come around my, whoops, still gotta go through it a bit more. There we go. So I don't have to make it super tight now, I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. So actually, that's a little too tight. So I twist these two together, and then, yeah, 
it's still a little tight. The way to really make it tight is you go through and you use a screwdriver and you do this. I'm gonna bend that wire. So now I would do the other stake and I would tweak them both with my screwdriver so that I'm holding it nice and straight but really firm both directions, right? I'm just not gonna do that right now. Here we wanna always take these and get rid of them from a safety issue. I'm gonna wrap them around the existing ones just so nobody pokes themselves on them. And that's it. So again, we duplicate on the other side, tighten it up nice and tight so it's holding the roots firm but the top can blow. And I think that's it. Talk to you later.